if you've been watching wrestling uh, for any sort of time, you know that WrestleMania is the grandest stage of them all. But even before WrestleMania starts, the next generation of WWE wants to put their stamp on the landscape. And they can do so at NXT Stand and Deliver, which takes place Saturday before night one of WrestleMania. Taking a look at the card this year, the theme of it is just bad blood. It is personal. It's just vendettas. A lot of these feuds have like two people or two like teams just want, want to beat the holy hell out of each other. And like the build has been great. The matches feel important. And you know, even if it doesn't come in with a, like a uh, like a hard feud, it's still between two uh, competitors that just want to go throw on a show. I'm super excited for this stand deliver card. But before we get to watch it, let's talk about it. Who is going to you know step up and show the rest of the world that they are next, and who's going to have their dreams crushed? This is the stand and deliver preview. The first uh, match is talk about kind of it was the last minute additions, but it's still pretty good. We have Joe Gacy versus Sean Spears. Sean has returned to NXT about a month or so ago, and he's been on a absolute path trying to make people see who they really are and take people out and all that kind of stuff. He carries Joe Gacy, who for all intents and purposes is about like the, I don't know, almost a modern day mankind to which he just gets his ass beat and beat and beat and keeps coming back. And these two have been on collision and on the recent epi uh, episode of NXT, Sean attacked Gacy before his match with Oba Femi. We uh, combined the attack with Oba just whooping ass. Gacy, uh, the match was stopped due, a, due to a referee stoppage. That's when they throw up the X. But later on, Gacy was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Give me Spears at uh, Stay and Deliver. And so we got this match. Um, I'm a huge Sean Sp uh, Spears fan. But even I, I can tell this doesn't have much juice to it as of right now. But Gacy is the lovable loser. And Sean is, for at least what I see, being built up to be a good North American contender in the future. So give me Sean Spears to win this match. All right, moving on to like the other last minute match. We have a six women tag hitting JC Jane, Izzy Dane, and Kiana James. Kind of rhymed. Balin Henley, Dia Hale, and Kalani Jordan. Like I said, this is a this one may be a last minute ad, but the bad blood's been like in there for a while. So JC Jane joined the faction Chase U in order to help save it, which is storyline uh, she did. But in doing so, kind of like let her toxicity kind of seep through, affecting people, especially Thea. And so uh, it came to a boiling point where JC was like, I don't, basically I don't need Chase you anymore. Move on. Thea felt betrayed. And it was just bad blood between them. You throw in Keanu James and Izzy Day, who just liked to be evil for the sake of it, which then brought on Kalani and. Balin, and it's just six women who with bad blood all in there fighting it out. Um, this one, it's it's uh, the story is there. I don't think that uh, right now that this match is going like this is it for a rivalry for the match. I think it continues after that. And for this to make sense and continue, I do believe that Team JC uh, Jane needs to win, so I'm going to go with them. Team JC's for, for the win. All right, next we have the North American Championship, which is being contested in a triple threat between champion Oba Femi, Josh Briggs, and Dijak. Now, if you're not familiar with NXT, Oba Femi is a monster being presented like a monster. He's NXT's, I don't know, if, new shiny toy favorite uh, right now. He's been dominant. He won the uh, North America title from Jag League convincing fashion, has defended it in convincing fashion, and has been just you know, presented and just, you know, presented like a legit badass. His toughest test yet comes in the form of two absolute giant men and Josh Briggs and Dijak. And this is just going to be like 
big meaty men slap meat. This is going to be a, a great match. All three of them can work. All three know how to wrestle big athletic matches, especially Dijak, who in my opinion has been the MVP of NXT so far this year. You now he can go in the ring. He's proven that over the past years. He proven he can uh, carry a, a feud and carry a program. My heart wants Dijak to win and finally get his. But I do think they continue to build Oba. I think he goes through this. I think we may see after after this a one-on-one -on -one match with Dijak. Who knows? But for right now, they want Oba on the big stage. That he's the next the, uh, next big thing. Oba Femi retains his North America title. An absolute hell of a match. All right. Next, we have the NXT Women's Championship between Lyra Valkyra and Roxanne Perez. And this this match is basically culmination of of Roxanne Perez for the last couple months you know complaining and championing and doing whatever she can to get finally get a one-on-one -on -one shot for a title that technically she never lost she had to relinquish last year due to injury but it started with her trying to be nice about it and then got some more like oh you're not giving me one-on-one -on -one, so I'll take it and then she had her shot recently one-on-one -on -one, but that was interrupted by Lola Vice cashing in her breakout tournament contract which is basically nxt's version of the money in the bank cash in any time for a title shot after that roxanne just flipped the switch got mean got vicious nxt roadblock taking out lyra by putting her arm on like the corner buckle and jumping on it like snapping it something like that and lyra's arm hasn't been 100 since up until this most recent episode of nxt she's been showing like in some sort of sling or anything and uh, this is, you know, Roxy going go out her title, showing off that mean look. And Lyra, who just wants to keep her reign. You know, she's had the title since fall, beating Becky Lynch. So this is two of the best women's wrestlers in NXT going at it. And while I like Lyra, I do think her reign's kind of been. And in my opinion, it's time for think, uh, it to change. And it's time for Lyra to be chasing again. I think as a face, she'll be better chasing than holding. And with this win, it can culminate Roxanne as one, the uh, champ again, and a top well, women wrestler on there. And to really solidify herself for a main roster run soon, assuming like she drops the title kind of quickly but with all that yeah give me Roxanne Perez to get back to title she never lost in a, a fun match that I think gets probably more brutal than people will expect but yeah give me Roxanne to regain the NXT Women's Championship all right next we have the NXT Tag Team Championship between the Wolf Dogs Braun Breaker Baron Corbin against Nathan Frazier and Axiom so Braun and Corbin are latest like enemies turn turn teammates you know like but they're the latest ones who had success winning the tag titles and you know it's been honestly a great run they're they're legitimately like funny people they play off they play well off each other and both can work and just been put on fantastic matches especially braun who's just coming into his own doing Honestly, proven he can do whatever the hell he wants in the ring, where it's like high flying, reversals, speed, all that kind of stuff. They are rolling, and they look to continue to roll against Nathan Frazier and Axiom, who won a triple threat match on the latest NXT to earn this shot. And Nathan, Frazier and Axiom are legitimately great to watch. They're high flying, they're fast. Like Braun has been doing the last couple months, they can just prove they've proven that they can do whatever they want in the ring just by thinking about it. This is going to be a great match. It's going to be the powerhouses of Braun and Baron versus the speed and quickness of Frazier and Axiom. All four can wrestle. Like, legitimately, I just want, I want to give them 30 some minutes. Just let them do whatever they want. Let them do whatever they can think about doing. This is going to be a great match. And as far as a winner, Axiom and Frazier would be a fun win. And I could see it being possible since, you know, Braun is technically on SmackDown now. And kind of doing double duty if they want him to go full time on smackdown dropping the titles here would be a great start but to me there's still more to do with this title reign between braun and baron and so i don't think they pulled the trigger yet soon but not yet give me braun uh breaker and baron corbin to 
retain their NXT tag titles. We had next we had the NXT championship match between Ilya Dragunov and Tony D'Angelo. This build has been more like a movie than a wrestling build. It's been vignettes and kidnappings and mafioso stuff and all that kind of, kind of stuff but from Tony D'Angelo, who if you don't know, is the Don of NXT and he has his mafia family. And Ilya Dragunov has been a, on a run. He is a star. You know, no matter what p opponent he's facing, he brings out the best in him. He turns it into a hard-hitting affair. There's damn near blood on every match he does. It looks and feels like actual fights, not wrestling matches. And he's proven that he is the best, definitely the best worker at NXT and one of the best workers in the whole company. I think that doesn't change. I'm a fan of the Tony D'Angelo's gimmick. I'm a fan of him on the mic. In ring, he, he's good. I'm not saying he's one of the greatest, not saying he's bad, he's just good. I think Ilya carries him to a better than expected match. I think Tony has a uh, a great career ahead of him. I think he has a NXT championship in his future, but not now. Ilya is too hot. He, there's too many views for him in the future, like a Dijak or a maybe Oba Femi in the future, or they run back Mel, uh, Carmelo or they run back Trick. There's a lot going on with Ilya. Uh, and if he's, unless he's getting called up soon, which he's to me, he's ready. He, I think he holds the title for longer. So Tony in the future, but not right now. Give me Ilya Dragunov to retain his NXT championship. And now we, we get to the most personal match on the card and the main event. Carmelo Hayes versus Trick Williams. These two were brothers, you know, for the last couple of years, these two were inseparable. You know, when you saw Carmelo, you saw Trick and vice versa. Um, you, they were doing the vignettes, they were doing the partying when Carmelo was a uh, North American champion, when he was NXT champion, they were like this. And the dynamic then was, you know, Melo was the attraction, Melo was a star, and Trick was the uh, hype man. He was the backup, he was the muscle. But, you know, as of late last year, definitely this year, you know, it started flipping. It wasn't, Melo wasn't the uh, attraction with Trick as the hype man. It was Trick getting the cheers, Trick getting the attention, all that. And it made Melo jealous, so much to a point that, you know, we they did it. They ran an angle to where Trick Williams was attacked backstage months ago. They kept saying, "Oh, who did it? Who did? Who did it? It was it. Was it you? No, it was you. No, it was you. All that kind of stuff." We finally got that answer at uh, at Vengeance Day, when after Trick lost his NXT ch uh, championship match against Ilya. Fantastic match, by the way. You, you do yourself a service to go, go on Peacock, wherever you have WD content, and go watch that match back. Great match. But after the match, Carmelo attacked Trick, saying Trick forgot his place as, you know, Carmelo's number two. And he let the pe uh, people's cheers get to him. And he admitted to being the one who attacked Trick all those months ago and taking him out. Trick came... Uh, after that attack of Avengers Day, came back, cost Carmelo a number one contender spot, which went to Tony D'Angelo. And now they're looking to settle their differences in the ring. You know, they were once were boys, they were once were brothers. Now they, they're ready to tear each other's heads off. This match is going to be personal. It's going to be emotional. It's the main event. I'm looking for, I don't think this match is going to be technical. I don't think we're going to see any like super duper moves. We're going to see like fists and tears and shenanigans and potential like anything else happening you know some dirty stuff here and there maybe who knows this one was hard to pick i don't know which way to go i can see both winning it it makes perfect sense if carmelo wins trick still needs to get his revenge if trick wins carmelo can come uh from behind you know the next nxt and reignite and just they can do twists and turns. They can weave new stuff into the story. Either way, this I think this feud continues into the summer. But for Stand and Deliver, I have Trick Williams winning this match, getting a measure of revenge. But I don't think the war is over after this.
a recap of my predictions is Sean Spears, Team JC Jane, Oba Femi, The Wolf Dogs, Roxanne, Ilya, and Trick. My predicted match of the night is going to be a tag team match just because they're going to tear the roof off the joint. And my predicted MVP is going to be Dijak because he's been the MVP of every damn major NXT show he's on. And I think that doesn't change. But again, we won't know until we watch. But that's going to do it for this video. Um, let me know in the comments who you think is winning. And go ahead and like and subscribe helps me out. Uh, it's heartfelt on all socials and I will catch you in the next video. I'm heartfelt. Peace.